Hi, I'm Peter White from a uh, representative for the Bay and Shearing Supplies here in Australia. And I'd like to introduce our 2C model handpiece, which is uh, new onto the market. We have uh, different design features from other hand pieces in that we have uh, a four bearing system. Uh, we have uh, one bearing there, another bearing here, here, and in the back joint. Uh, also, we have a grease point in the back joint, so it allows for a better lubrication, longer term lubrication, uh, which will relate back to uh, longer lasting uh, longevity in the life of the handpiece. We have uh, developed a good geometry up the front end of the, the cutting end of the handpiece uh, and uh, we are starting to find that uh, our handpiece is very competitive in the market. Uh, I'd like to uh, go over a few details on the setting up of the handpiece and uh, the maintenance replacing of cup and post. Now I'd like to uh, show the uh, method of uh, replacing a cup and post in the handpiece. So we'll just start by undoing the tension nut. The uh, locking screw which stops the hand the uh, fork from slipping out it's taken out and then the undoing the post here So, and removal of the tension cup and then pulling the tension pin out and sliding out the fork, trying not to remove the ball. In this case we removed it but we'll show you how to put that back in. Our cup, tension cup, which is here, we then sit on a vice like so, and with the pin there, we just use it and knock it out. When we get wear in the post and cup, the uneven wear will create vibration and the post will not sit evenly into the cup. We have a flat point which is produced on the back of the post and we have a quite a considerable wear point at the back of the cup. All right. This will create vibration, it will create heat and most importantly of all, we lose our crisp cut. And uh, then we have all sorts of problems occurring. Okay, so in finding that we've got a worn post and cup, we need to replace it. And what we are doing is we have shown how we have removed the post and the cup. We will put the cup back into the fork like so and we just set it in there and we find a high point to sit the fork on and we just quietly tap it back into position. We then, from there, the method that we normally use is we sit the ball on the uh, bench like that, we push our finger into it, we create an indentation we align the top of the crank spindle like so, so we can see it and we quietly slide that up like that. And for you blokes with short fingers it might be a bit more difficult. 
Right. So we set that down. We now bring the ball down to the bottom of the race and we quietly bring the fork in and sit it over top of the ball. Like that. Bring it in. We then position the spring and we bring the tension pin into play and just slide it in like so. We put grease into the tension sleeve, which is very important, and then slide that back in. We then bring the locking screw into place and just quietly work it in with your fingers, making sure not to cross thread it. And then get it well started with your fingers and then we use the screwdriver to finish it up. And then put the tension nut on and screw that down. If it doesn't go on the first time, we need to just pinch the spring in here to get it on. Turning the handpiece upside down, we put in the centre post. When we set it up, we're usually looking to have one to one and a half threads protruding from the base of the nut on the post, and that just gives us a, a starting point. We then put our comb and cutter on. We're using a half-worn cutter to uh, get ourselves our right post setting. And we're now going to set it so the ball is sitting at its highest point. So we're looking through this hole here. And by eye, we're wanting to be able to see the top third of the ball sitting round about flush with the top of the fork. In here. And with our post gauge, this point here sits down on front of the fork. And this shaft here, pin, sits on top of the ball. And as you can see, it moves up and down. And what we're looking to do is to be able to get that ball pushed up so it's sitting flush up here with the top of the post gauge. So it needs to come flush like that. And that should be our correct setting which that is sitting pretty much right. So there's no adjustment to be done there. If we need to adjust it, turn it upside down. And if this is sitting high, we need to bring the post out. So we, well this should still be loose, but we just undo this nut there. And we then adjust the post to whatever depth, whether we need to take it in or take it out, raising and lowering the post. So we find our position. We then go back to adjust it, to check it. Now that we have set our post to the right height, we then need to tighten up the locking nut. So the way to do that is to screw the tension down on the handpiece 
as tight as we can get it using a spanner. We then tighten up this post. When we've got that tight, we must remember to undo the tension on the tension nut and then bring it back to our right tension. When we've tightened that, we then take the post gauge and check that everything is, that the ball is at the right height and that our setting is correct. Under the uh, tension nut, we have a tension spring and the reason why we have this tension spring is to maintain the tension on the handpiece and to stop the tension cup from unwinding, which then can cause a lock-up and serious injury. Do not remove the tension spring. Right, now we're going to look at the lubrication of the handpiece. Um, it's important to lubricate your handpiece purely for performance and longevity. Uh, if you don't, you very quickly find that uh, you've got overheating problems and poor performance. Now, we have in the back end of the um, 2C handpiece, we have a grease point, and uh, that will lubricate the inner half of the back joint, which uh, is a special feature that uh, Bayern have provided uh, to create this longevity. Now, on the spring, the caps, the grease caps here, they should be uh, greased once a month. And uh, going back to the grease nipple or grease point and for the back end, it should be greased uh, once every week. To the rest of the handpiece, the cogs, the ferrule, should be done uh, every cutter or comb change, the start of every run. The ball on the ball race should be done every comb and cutter or the start of every run. When we oil the cup and post, we should be positioning it upside down like that so the oil runs down into the cup. That again should be done every comb and cutter or the start of every run. Uh, the same again with across the chicken feet and for the cutters. So just through there or back through the back into the cutters like that. Um, again with the tension sleeve we should be applying the grease at least once a week but it is important that you oil and grease your handpiece to get that longevity and uh, performance from it.